Welcome to Holy Family. We're glad you're here with us as we prepare to encounter our Lord Jesus in word and sacrament on the solemnity of Christ the King. We pray that our worship may not only bring honor and glory to God, but be a source of special blessing for ourselves, our loved ones, and our whole community. My name is Eileen Dillon, and I will serve as lector today. The Mass intention um, is for Richie Champa. The presider is Father Bob. Today's second collection will be for the retired religious sisters of the Archdiocese of Boston. Your generosity will express fitting gratitude for their many years of dedicated service. Before we begin Mass, we invite you to check in on your favorite social media before silencing your device. It's one simple way we can share our faith. Good morning. Our opening hymn is all glory, laud, and honor, which can be found in Breaking Bread on page 136. Please stand. <laughs> Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. With the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your sister. Well, good morning, and welcome, especially those who are viewing on our live stream. We're happy to have you with us as we celebrate this great feast of Christ the King, our, the last weekend, last Christ Sunday of the church year. We begin, believe it or not, next weekend with the season of Advent. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate Holy Eucharist, let us call to mind those times we have not allowed Jesus to be King, to be Lord of our lives, and have gone our own way, not following the ways of His. Lord Jesus, you have shown us the way to the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you have given us the consolation of the truth. Christ, have mercy. Christ, Christ have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the good shepherd, leading us into everlasting life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. And may Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Amen.
Let us pray. Almighty, ever-living God, whose will is to restore all things in your beloved Son, the King of the universe, grant, we pray, that the whole creation, set free from slavery, may render your majesty service and ceaselessly proclaim your praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God, forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Daniel. As the visions during the night continued, I saw one like a son of man coming on the clouds of heaven when he reached the ancient one and was presented before him. The one like a son of man received dominion, glory, and kingship. All peoples, nations, and languages serve him. His dominion is an everlasting dominion that shall not be taken away. His kingship shall not be destroyed. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. King, he is robed in majesty, robed in majesty. The Lord is King, he is robed in majesty. A reading from the book of Revelation. Jesus Christ is the faithful witness, the firstborn of the dead and rulers of the kings of the earth. To him who loves us and has freed us from our sins by his blood, who has made us into a kingdom, priest for his God and Father, to him be glory and power forever and ever. Amen. Behold, he is coming amid the clouds, and every eye will see him, even those who pierced him. All the peoples of the earth will lament him. Yes, amen. I am the Alpha and the Omega, says the Lord God, the one who is and who was and who is to come, the Almighty. 
The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Alleluia. From the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory to you, Lord. Pilate said to Jesus, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus answered, Do you say this on your own, or have others told you about me? Pilate answered, I am not a Jew, am I? Your own nation and the chief priests handed you over to me. What have you done? Jesus answered, my kingdom does not belong to this world. If my kingdom did belong to this world, my attendants would be fighting to keep me from being handed over to the Jews. But as it is, my kingdom is not here. So Pilate said to him, Then you are a king. Jesus answered, You say I am a king. For this I was born, and for this I came into the world, to testify to the truth. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. You know how if you're starting a new job or say you're moving to a new country with a new culture and in any new experience like those you need to kind of get to know what the culture of that new job is about or, or the new place you're in and whether it be learning the language or the customs so that you're kind of working into what are the expectations what are those ways of living that in effect will make your participation in the new job or whatever the new culture is successful and, and not uh, troublesome. Well, in a very similar way, God has allowed for us to be given, you might say, guidelines, directions, um, a way of looking at how we can navigate our membership in this world, in our participation in being a member of the human family here on earth. To think about the fact that we're given ways that we can better understand who we are as God's own sons and daughters, what we're supposed to be about as we live our lives here on earth, and putting it in the framework of understanding that there's more, where we're going. And the revelation of those directions, you might say, those instructions and way of living here on, in the earth, is the person of Jesus Christ. It's interesting, it's not just the Ten Commandments that we were given by God through Moses, not just law, but God wanted to come into our human condition, God who became a man in the person of Jesus, to in effect be the very way he conveys his message of love, his design for the world, and his hope that we would live 
with an eye to something more than just life here on earth, that this isn't all there is. And we know that what Jesus said and did, principally in his life of love, showing us that love isn't just a feeling, it's a decision. That it's looking for the good of another, not just when we feel a sentiment of affection that the way of life, Jesus says, is love one another as I have loved you. He invites us to share the very same kind of mercy that he has shown us in terms of forgiveness. It's an interesting phenomenon, but truth that God reveals himself primarily in terms of forgiveness. Think about that for a moment. When we come to Mass, we acknowledge that sometimes we're not always able to reveal the goodness and beauty and all of what God has made us to be we sometimes fall short because of sin, because of making a decision that is not in accord with the plan that he has laid out for us, revealed by Jesus Christ, our King. And so he wants us only but to acknowledge where we have fallen short, seek his grace to help us be the best person that he has made us to be, within this context of life as a human being, with all of its difficulties and struggles, as well as joys, as we seek to navigate in a world that we want to promote his kingdom, his way of life, that is a king of justice, of mercy, of harmony, selfless sacrificial love, and peace. And so the Lord, in the person of Jesus has said, Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Help them and let me be the source by which they can be reconciled with you and understand better who they are, what life's about, and where they're going. That you have such a beautiful existence eternally with you in heaven, with God in heaven. And he's the directions. He's the one that's in charge of our universe. As we celebrate this feast of Christ the King, he's the one that we hope and pray can be our guide, our ruler, our Lord, as we call it, to be the one that guides the way we go about living our lives and the context within which we see our meaning, our purpose, and our destiny. He's a directions. And it requires, as any person in a job or living in a particular circumstance, in our country for that matter, we follow the leadership of our leaders. Now, certainly we can't equate Jesus' authority and leadership on the same level as a manager of a job or a president or some you know, leader within a country, but that he is the ultimate authority. He is the one who is God, made man to help us understand what's important. What should we not espouse? What is worth following? What is not? In the terms of what Jesus has taught us, in terms of what Jesus, through the power of his Spirit, has offered us in the teachings of our church. But we come acknowledging that part and parcel of that struggle we have in life is the, the very core of what we deal with when we're born. Sometimes it's called original sin, but it's... If, if, essentially the tendency to do what we want to do and not what God wants to do. That we have a self-preference, a self-centeredness, 
that we want that ability to make a decision and choose whatever we think is the right and the good. And that undermines and does not acknowledge the authority of Jesus Christ. That is not in accord with his plan. And we can see the result of it in that way in which relativism in choosing whatever one feels is right and good and how it rubs up against and often is in opposition to the rights and good of others. And not having that authority of Christ the King to be our guide, to allow us to be at peace with ourselves, with others, and with him, where we can see the turmoil and the evil that only perpetuates without that Savior, Jesus Christ, to bring that forgiveness, to bring that grace that allows for us to overcome the natural tendency that we're born with to prefer what we want to do and not what God wants. Jesus says, in response to Pilate's inquiry, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. We seek to belong to the truth. We seek to continue our relationship with Jesus Christ, who is our truth, our way, he says, our truth, our life. And how we need God's forgiveness for the times when well, yes, but only when it's convenient. Or sometimes, but not all the time. We're not always willing to wholeheartedly follow Jesus and the truth that he offers. Do you take each day, a time each day, to listen? to the voice of Jesus? When he says to us, everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice, it's a matter of reflection in our prayer, not only talking to God, prayer is not only speaking, but in any relationship that we have with any person, we need to listen and have an exchange. In the quiet of our heart each day to allow the Lord to inform, to guide, to inspire, to incline us according to his will, presenting to him what our circumstances are, reflecting on the word of God that may well have a bearing on the issues at hand, looking at what the church is teaching, inspired by the Spirit, have given us to allow for us to come to a way of responding that is in accord with what we believe to be the guidance of Jesus, our King. Everyone who belongs to the truth listens to my voice. The, the problem is in our society is that we're not listening to each other. There are camps, polarized opposites. They won't even regard another point of view. If we only but listen, we will learn, we will be blessed. The context of who Jesus is as our king is the bearer of divine love, wanting truly to save us from ourselves and from what will otherwise be our doom, not only eternally, but here and now on earth. Let's pray as we celebrate Mass today in response to the Word of God. And I invite you to consider what St. Paul wrote in one of his letters where he said, It is no longer I who live, but Christ who lives in me. 
When we come to Eucharist, I like to think of it in terms of coming and receiving Jesus and ever more seeking to become like him, to in effect incorporate Jesus as I receive him in Eucharist, to allow him forevermore to take me over, to allow for me to evermore follow him without reserve or compromise, but evermore completely. St. Paul says, it's no longer I then who live, but Christ who lives in me. Let's pray that we may live in that way of longing for the Lord to be our king, our guide, our way of life, allowing him to be our guide, our companion, and see what difference it will make in the peace that will reign within our hearts, in the peace that will reign within our families, the peace that will reign within our wider community. Let us stand and together now profess our faith. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now bring our needs and petitions confidently before God's throne. For the church, that we may grow as a people of truth by listening to God's word, sharing in the Eucharist, and giving witness to it in our decisions and actions, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the retired sisters of our Archdiocese, that through our prayers and financial support, they will experience the love and care they deserve for their dedication and service to God's people. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who celebrate Thanksgiving this week, that our hearts may be filled with the gratitude for the gifts God has given us that all travelers will reach their destination safely, and that we may be renewed by our visits with family and friends. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our young people who are preparing to receive the sacrament of reconciliation soon with their families, that they may feel the gift of God's love and mercy through the sacrament now and through their lives. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died, that they may experience the peace that only Christ can give, it's especially at this Mass for Richie Champa. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the petitions received in our parish prayer line and for the personal needs and intentions we offer in the silence of our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. O God, 
hear these prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our King. Amen. Amen. Kindly be seated. And during this time of Mass, when the basket is being passed, we contribute a portion of our livelihood for the support of Holy Family Church. The second collection today supports the retired religious sisters of our archdiocese. Your contributions symbolically join with the offering of bread and wine, which represents your own sacrificial offering united to the offering Jesus made for us on the cross. Those who contribute online are welcome to drop in the basket of green I gave online card available at the doors of the church. Worthy is the Lamb that is brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of all his holy church. As we offer you, O Lord, the sacrifice by which the human race is reconciled to you, we humbly pray that your Son himself may bestow on all nations the gifts of unity and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for you anointed your only begotten Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, with the oil of gladness as eternal priest and king of all creation, so that by offering himself on the altar of the cross as a spotless sacrifice to bring us peace, he might accomplish the mysteries of human redemption and making all created things subject to his rule. He might present to the immensity of your majesty an eternal and universal kingdom, a kingdom of truth and life, 
a kingdom of holiness and grace, a kingdom of justice, love, and peace. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven. And as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you willed to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, and with all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth with your servant Francis, our Pope, Sean, our Bishop, the Order of Bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, 
gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. To our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who were pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, kingdom the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you, Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with, with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. And may the peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us offer each other a sign of peace. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Having received the food of immortality, we ask, O Lord, that glorying in obedience to the commands of Christ, the King of the universe, we may live with him eternally in his heavenly kingdom, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Just a few items to draw to your attention before we conclude Mass. First of all, the deadline for participation in the Appalachia Service Project trip this summer has been extended. Interested teens and adult chaperones should check our website for details. The Duxbury Interfaith Council is collecting gift cards and monetary contributions in lieu of actual Christmas gifts for over 135 needy Duxbury families. Boxes are at the doors of the church to receive your donation. Our parish is partnering with Duxbury for All with the assistance of Catholic Charities in welcoming an Afghan refugee family to Duxbury. And your help is needed. Please check the bulletin insert in this week's parish bulletin for details, or for more information, contact Jean Cregan. You're welcome to come to Mass this Thanksgiving morning at 8.15 a.m. Our choir will provide special music, and what more fitting way is there to express our gratitude to God for all of his blessings to us. And please pray for the repose of the soul of Richie Champa, whose funeral mass will take place here tomorrow at 11 a.m. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace, glorifying the Lord by your life. Thanks be to God. Have a wonderful week and a happy Thanksgiving. The same to you, Father.